there's a lot of difference between England and Afghanistan. There's, if you, if you want to go education, you have to pay for it. And if you want to get food, obviously, same as the UK, you have to pay for it. But in school, you obviously get free meal from the council people like that. But in my country, there's nothing for free. You have to pay for education, for dinner, everything like that in school. So my, parents, my dad, he came before me to England like 10 years ago. So he decided to bring me here to do good, to be somewhere in the future. Obviously, everyone have a dream to be somewhere in the future. And I decided to come here to do well in my education and my athletics career as well. I was, to be honest, I was struggling for one year because I thought, oh my God, how am I going to do these people? I, I didn't speak no English. I didn't even say how to say hi to them and that. But when I went primary school, I started year four. So I went there. They, they treat me so good. They said, don't worry about nothing. We're going to help you to teach you how to speak English, how to carry on with your friends and stuff like that. And I came here to start primary school. They involved me in sports. They thought they, my, my primary school teacher think I was first. So I, then they chose me for athletics and I won a lot of medals for them. Then I had, I had to give up football because I was in individual sports. So anytime my team lose, I had to fight someone. So because I, I, I couldn't blame myself, so I had to fight everyone. So then I left off football to for athletics. I don't think he would have seen out his first year in school. Um, I think he was he was quite close. He'd had a had had a couple of skirmishes with a, a few other students, and you know, and, and struggled to actually see the wrong in anything that he was doing actually. And and. Through sport, through teamwork, um, through working with you know various other sports people and, and our, our department. As I say, he did football. He loved football. Got into a few issues with football at times as well, and, and is probably more of an individual sportsman. But he likes he likes to talk to other students. He works with the younger students quite a lot. From what he's learnt from us, he's he's, he's transferring on, and, and Lisa's been a real influence in his life as well. So no, I don't actually think he would have um, made it through school actually, and uh, without without the influence of sport. Uh, when I first met Mahmood, he was, um, he'd come for his induction day as, as a year seven student at the school. And um, we, we put on a, a series of activities, uh, sporting related activities mainly. And we, we saw Mahmood running in the playground straight away noticed that he's he was fast you know he he uh, so I, I spoke to him and asked him if he'd been involved in any athletics and he said only at primary school he'd done a little bit um, he hadn't been at primary school for very long because he'd uh, come from Afghanistan um, but my impressions were that he was uh, a lively very lively boy I had the strongest finish and the strongest start and uh, they made me to do 400 meters because they thought um, I'm strong and a strong finisher. So I said let's try for it. The first time I'd done it which I had um, 55 seconds which wasn't, was good for me because it was my first race of the season. Then at the end of the season I achieved a lot of stuff in 400 meters. I went there to win national level English schools which I got gold medalists. People had tried hard for 6 or 5 years to win that gold medal and my first race went there and I won gold medal. I was so proud of myself. I was think when I give up, I was thinking, I was like, listen, all this athlete winning the gold medal, like you some boy, you Mufara, you Ron Blake, and that stuff like that, athlete like that, they didn't, they didn't win because they, they didn't want to be so fast. They trained for it. Obviously, they trained from my age up to now, these days. Now they look at them, they're winning gold medal, they're legend now. Obviously, I have to do the same thing to, to get to, to reach my target. One of the biggest things, one of the most difficult things I've found for Mahmood is losing a race. It's, it's incredibly difficult for him. So we, we sat down and we watched uh, Usain Bolt losing races, which was, was useful for him to have a look at, coming fifth in races and finding it difficult. And, you know, actually every time he had a step up. So every time Mahmood has a step up to the next division, to the next, you know, whether he does go on to represent GB, if he comes in and gets a fourth or fifth position, to understand why he got that and what he can do to, to, to move forward. That, that's a development and he is working on that, he's really working on that.
you know, that, that makes our job worth doing. And, and Mahmoud's incredibly special to us, just like all of the other students. Um, but, you know, he, he has been on a, an absolute rise. And he's, what, he, what he does for our school is he, he, gives, he gives a lot of hope. And actually, it's, it's a case of, right, he can mentor other students in the school. He can look at challenging year sevens that we've got at the moment who are finding the transition from primary or the transition from another country a real difficulty. And he, he can be an influence on them and actually be a role model. So there's no difference between me and the United Kingdom or Afghanistan. So whoever I like to represent, I will represent them. My, my proper aim is to go and compete in 2016. If not, then I'm looking forward to do in 2020. Hopefully, hopefully, if I made it to, to Olympic 2016, I will be so happy.